Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. I hope you're all having a wonderful Tuesday thus far. And so, of course, in this video, we'll be taking a look at the latest for the Caribbean, but we'll be focused on that low pressure area that is expected to develop as you're going to be heading throughout the rest of today and into tomorrow and eventually going to be moving inland as we head to the latter part of the week. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update on what's going on out there. Alright, and so let's go ahead and get things started and we're focusing on the Caribbean first. So looking at the region, we can see that there isn't too much happening. There is a bit of activity noted in the vicinity of the Greater Antilles, especially uh, for Hispaniola and also for parts of the Southern Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands. There is some activity there as well, but for the rest of the region, there isn't too much happening. Beautiful sunshine for most areas, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, uh, the Leeward and Windward Islands of course and also as we go over to the western caribbean but uh, occasional cloudiness for some areas including parts of jamaica cuba maybe the cayman islands as well and uh, over into parts of central america so uh, there isn't anything major happening nor is anything major anticipated as we're going to be heading into the next couple of days however as we head to next week we could see a little bit of change and we'll talk about that uh later this week or as time goes by so now let's Let's move up to the Gulf and we can see here that there is quite a bit of activity in the area. We can see some showers and thunderstorms noted and also as we head more over, uh, more over into parts of the Bahamas, there we have some uh, shower and thunderstorm activity drifting toward the east and that is because of a front and there is also a trough that is noted uh, just before that front. But as for the Gulf, there we have all that activity brewing that is expected to be in association with that low pressure area that's likely to develop as we head into later today so we're going to be taking a look at what the models are forecasting and so we're going to be getting kick started with uh the different model runs beginning with the euro and here we can definitely see that the model is expecting that low pressure area to develop and move inland as we head to thursday and go in to friday when it is going to be affecting other parts of the southeastern u.s the gfs is not really anticipating anything much we just see all of that moisture in association with the system so nothing major is anticipated by the model uh but regardless of development or not this is going to be bringing a lot of rainfall to parts of the southeastern u.s which includes parts of uh southern louisiana southern mississippi alabama florida as well as georgia and uh the carolinas as well so guys please be aware of this upcoming rainfall event and of course do not take any unnecessary risks so there is going to be quite a bit of rainfall activity and uh looking at the 24 hour totals expected here as we progress so we we can see that this is a very colorful map and as we head more to those blues and shades of purple that is where we have some of those higher totals so the euro is expecting that we're going to have all that activity in the gulf as we head to thursday drifting inland and eventually making its way over into other parts of the u.s the carolinas as we head to the end of this week as for the caribbean we're seeing that there isn't much activity that is anticipated maybe just brief showers at the most uh, but nothing major expected in the region as i said the gfs is sort of in agreement with this but showing some higher totals for some areas especially along uh the gulf coast states so uh again guys even though this might not become something with a name to say a subtropical or tropical storm, it could still bring quite a bit of impacts. And in terms of development, conditions are definitely not that conducive out there as we look at the wind shear map. Uh, this is for the GFS and where we have those reds indicate stronger upper level winds. Now, these are a huge problem during the hurricane season when it comes to tropical cyclone development because storms often struggle to get all of that activity constantly concentrated because of the wind shear displacing that activity it's basically interfering with the development of uh, tropical cyclone activity so fortunately not anything strong for the gulf coast states but still a lot of that rainfall is up ahead for you guys and the euro model is also depicting a lot of that strong uh, shear so this is going to be uh, inhibiting development coupled with the fact that the gulf isn't very warm either tropical cyclones typically 
we need at least 26 degrees Celsius. And closer to the Gulf Coast states, we see 25, 24, and even lower 23 degrees Celsius. So as we head to the hurricane season, of course, we're going to be seeing that continuous warming. But as of right now, things are not conducive for us to see any major intensification of that system. So there is a pretty good chance that we're not going to be seeing that we're not going to be seeing something developing from this. However, as we look at the GFS uh, simulated IR satellite, which is infrared satellite, now this is what these satellites could look like as we progress into the next couple of days. And there we have the time for each of those uh, forecast runs. And uh, as we take a look at what is anticipated as we're going to be heading into uh, tomorrow, we can definitely see where that system is looking so lopsided, so asymmetrical. And uh, that is going to be the effect of that wind shear on the system. It is going to uh, displace all of that shower and thunderstorm activity. So that is why we're seeing uh, the GFS showing this uh, depiction here of it as we head into tomorrow. So quite a bit up ahead for you guys in the southeastern U.S. And I can't emphasize enough to take the necessary precautions and stay safe. And of course, I'm going to be keeping you updated as we progress into the next couple of days on what is happening across the Caribbean and of course anything else that pops up. So that is pretty much it for right now. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. And of course, remember to always be weather wise.